Hello and welcome to PMZLounge.com. Before I say anything, before we begin with this video, let me remind you everything that we have talked about on Critical Path Method is available in the playlist. The first link in the description is going to take you to that playlist. So that's something that you should check out. Uh, it has everything. It talks about what critical path is, what critical path method is, how you calculate float, how you calculate early start, early finish, late start, late finish with examples. We have also covered some of the questions that our viewers had. Now, one thing to note here, one thing that we did not cover yet is that there are actually two ways to calculate the early start, late start, early finish, late finish values. And it all is about whether you start with zero or one. What do we mean? Let's get started. Let's try to understand that. So you either start on day zero or day one. That's the whole crux of it. When you look at a network diagram, whether you start at day zero or day one is going to change the game. It is going to change everything. It is also going to change the formula that you are going to use to calculate the early start and late start, early finish and late finish. So day zero is something that we have discussed already. Like I said, first link in the description, you must visit that playlist. You must check those videos out. I can guarantee you that you will not have to study anything about critical path method, anything about those critical path method numericals if you go through that playlist at least once. Right. So day zero is something that we have discussed previously. Day zero is something that personally I like and personally I learned when I cleared my PMP. So that is something which is simpler. That is something which is easier and that is something which I prefer. But I understand that some texts will talk about day one as the starting point of your network diagram. So let's let's keep these texts away and let's dive into some examples to understand what we are talking about here. All right, now let's look at some examples. But before I talk about the examples, I'd like to remind you this is how activities are represented in a network diagram. So you have four numbers that represent uh, in the four corners. They represent the early start, late start, early finish, late finish and there's a number in the middle which represents float. So this is the network diagram. This is where we begin on day zero, right? So the early start for the first activity is zero. This is something we have already discussed. First link in the description is going to take you to the entire playlist. We have discussed this time and again, and I'm not going to repeat it here, but this is the first method of calculating the network diagram values. And the second method is where we will start on day one and not on day zero. So let's look at this example, the second one now. You have two activities, activity A and activity B. You have the durations four and five respectively. And since we are not solving the entire problem and we are not taking the entire uh, network diagram, I am just going to be using this uh, late start value for the successor activity of activity B for just for calculation purposes. Now these are the formulas that you need to use when you begin on day one and not on day zero, right? So these are the formulas that you will keep in mind when we are going to solve the problem and find out the early start, late start, early finish, late finish values for this diagram. Now again, the major difference, the biggest difference is here A the first activity, the early start is one and not zero. So here we begin on zero. Here we are beginning on one. Now let's find the early finish value for activity A and we will use this formula for it, which is early start. Early start is again one plus activity duration. Activity duration is five, which is which means one plus five is six minus one will give you five. So this is the early finish value of activity A. Now continuing on the forward pass, we go to activity B and calculate the early start and we use this formula to do so. So early start is equals to early finish of predecessor activity 
the activity B's predecessor is activity A and the early finish is 5. So 5 plus 1 is going to be 6. So that is the early start value for activity B. Now to calculate early finish, we will again use this formula of early finish. Activity B, the early start is 6. So you use 6 plus the activity duration, which is 4. So 6 plus 4 is 10 minus 1, which means 9. So this is the early finish value for activity B. Now to do a backward pass, we would need this value, which we are going to use. So to calculate the late finish for activity B, this value, we will use this formula. Late finish is equals to late start of successor activity, which is 10, right? This value minus one. So basically it means nine. So nine is the value of late finish for activity B. Now to calculate late start, we will use this formula. So late start for activity B is late finish, which is nine minus activity duration, which is again four. So nine minus four, you have five plus one, which means six. So this is the late start value for activity B. Again, using these formulas, you can calculate the late finish and late start for activity A as well. So these are the values. And if you see, you will realize that the early finish and late finish values, the early finish and late finish values in both these diagrams are same. Nine, nine, five and five. So these are same for both these diagrams. The only difference is in the early start and late start values. Now, what difference does this make, right? What is the difference that this has made? Actually, if you calculate float, float is equals to late start minus early start or late finish minus early finish. If you calculate float for activity B and activity A, you will realize that the float values for these two activities are actually the same. So whichever method you use, whether you use method one or you use method two, the float values will always be the same. This is the method that we have already discussed and this is the method which I prefer. This is the method which I learned when I cleared my PMP exam. But there are a lot of texts out there which talks about this method also. Like I said, the float value is going to be the same, whichever method you use, but a lot of text start on day one and then a lot of text start on day zero also. So just so you don't get confused, if you read day one on a network diagram, I thought about creating this video and letting you know about it. So that is all that we had in this video. Hope it was helpful. I cannot stress enough on why you should check the first link in the description and check out the entire playlist because that is going to be of immense help. Do hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay notified whenever we upload a new video. And don't forget to check out the website pmclounge.com, your number one free PMP resource. Thank you and have a nice day.